This video was brought to you by Ting. More about them at the end of the video. So you're in need of some quick cash, except you run out of options to make money legally. No one's hiring, the working man is a sucker, the pay sucks, or whatever other stories you tell yourself. So it looks like we're gonna have to explore more illicit means of making money. So let's look at our options. You could be a drug dealer, Eh, drug dealers are usually viewed as like dirty scumbags and we don't want to associate ourselves with them. You could commit a myriad of online fraud. Yeah, although that's probably the easiest crime to commit these days and you can do it from home at a massive scale. There's nothing sexy or exciting about it. It doesn't get your adrenaline pumping. What if we rob the bank? Hmm, okay. now we're talking. Think about it. You need money, banks have a lot of money. Everybody get down on the floor! Compared to other criminals throughout history, bank robbers have always been seen as the quintessential Robin Hood, stealing from those greedy rich bankers. Thanks to decades upon decades of Hollywood romanticizing bank robbers, every single person has at least thought about robbing a bank before. And besides, today, the federal government guarantees the average person's deposits anyways. No one's gonna get hurt, it's a victimless crime. We're here for the bank's money, not your money. Your money's insured by the federal government, you're not gonna lose a dime. Since the general public isn't directly getting hurt, they're much less likely to retaliate and demand justice compared to something like murderers, drug dealers, or online scammers. So obviously, becoming a career bank robber is the only logical route. But just like any other crime, the smallest mistake and you are screwed. With a very hefty fine and prison time of up to 20 to 25 years, depending on if you assaulted anyone. And being that a little over half of all bank robbers are eventually caught, this new profession of yours shouldn't be taken lightly. Add on top of that the fact that the average take for bank robberies in 2012 was only around $10,000, and you'll see that we have a lot of work to do. So let's learn how to rob a bank. Theoretically, of course. Bank robbery is just like any other business or investment. The more risks you take on, typically but not always, the more money you're going to make. That means there are a few different ways you can approach robbing said bank. You can go in guns blazing and force the manager to open up the vault. You can plan out an elaborate heist where you go in at night and break into the vault. And these methods will typically give you much more money. Or you can keep things cool and calm by simply walking in, passing the teller a demand note telling them to give you their money, and boom, you're in and out without a hinge. Except you'll probably only get the money the teller has in the register, which isn't a lot. Take Joe Lois case. He took the simple route we just went over by using demand notes and robbed around 30 banks in 14 months before getting caught. 30 banks! But since he took arguably less risk per heist, he only ended up with around $250,000 at the end of the day. A quarter million, not that much for 30 heist. In the end, it's not a lot of money. It's only like 7,000 a bank robbery because in the beginning, sometimes I would only get 1,000 from a bank. And one time I robbed a bank and I knew I got just nothing from them, like maybe a couple thousand. And I was so angry, I just walked in the bank next door and robbed it too, even though the police were on the way. <laughs> <Really>? so, <yeah. laughs> Compare that to the Dunbar robbery case. Much more elaborate, much more risky, but in just one heist, they left with $18.9 million, or 75 times more money than what Joe Loa did in 30 heist. So pick your poison, but whatever route you take, the number one rule you have to keep in mind is to not do what's expected by the public or law enforcement. Study the data on what most would-be bank robbers do on their heist and figure out a way to do the exact opposite to confuse law enforcement. For example, the same guy we talked about earlier, Joe Loya, figured out that most robbers do their first heist far away from their home, let's say an hour away. Then they get super paranoid and skittish afterwards about being caught, but once they do calm down and are ready for their second heist, they're more comfortable, they get lazy, and then they'll rob a bank that's let's say only... 45 minutes away from their home. Once they're ready for the third heist, they choose a bank that's only 30 minutes away, then 20 minutes away, and then next thing you know, law enforcement are able to connect the dots and narrow down their location until boom, prison. So what did Joe Loya do? He was in LA, so instead of following the norm, he did the exact opposite of what was expected by robbing a bank near his home first, then going further and further away from his home to completely puzzle authorities, leading him all the way to San Diego. That is what you have to do. Study bank robbery data, recognize the patterns that law enforcement go after, and do the opposite. So now that you have a general idea and strategy behind bank robberies, let's get into the nitty gritty details of your heist. Every great heist starts with a great crew, right? Well, not so fast. 
I can't do it, Sonny. What? I, I'm not gonna make it, Sonny. Partnering up with other people does have its pros, but it also comes with some major cons. Oh, fuck me. The biggest pros are you can rob bigger banks and take home bigger ticks. With multiple people, you can instill more fear into the employees and customers, a very important point that we'll touch on later. Since you can bring in people with different skill sets, a dedicated driver, a vault cracker, etc., you can do much more elaborate heists. The biggest downside is that legitimate partnerships in legal businesses are already risky enough. Ask any successful entrepreneur and they'll probably have a nightmare of a story to tell you about a business partnership that went bad. But partnerships in the criminal underworld world where you don't have the option of suing someone or calling the police on them, that can get pretty dicey. Go. Every person you bring on is not just another loose end, but you have to worry about their friends and family finding out. On top of that, you have to manage their egos, their pride, their greed. I told you, the next fucking thing's not ready yet. Make it ready. The point I'm trying to get at is that if you're going to bring on other people onto your new career path, you better trust them with your life. Choosing the right bank to rob is pretty simple, but it does depend on what scale you're going at this with. If you're going in guns blazing, you want to find out what kind of defense measures they have in place like panic buttons, bait money, etc. If you're going to do the whole breaking in at night and cracking the vault, you're going to need to choose a bank that has a security system you can pass, a vault you're able to crack, etc. But whatever bank you choose, for the most part, you're going to want to make sure that it has multiple escape routes so that when police arrive, they won't know which direction you took off in. Banks at freeway interchanges make for prime targets. Choosing the right getaway car is also rather simple. Following our rule of doing what's unexpected, if everyone envisions the perfect getaway car to be a van or a tough looking SUV, you want to use the exact opposite. Maybe a sleeper car or a Prius. Something that when law enforcement arrives and they're scanning around the area for the potential getaway car, they'll pass right by you without looking twice. Over the years, banks and authorities have gotten more and more sophisticated against thieves, so just make sure you don't fall victim to any of these traps. Over 75% of banks in the US use dye packs disguised as cash that explode shortly after you leave the building. Banks also have cash with GPS trackers in them. Then there's the classic silent alarm or the panic button that tellers use. Although these are tricky, if you know what you're doing and are in and out, it shouldn't be too bad. When someone pushes the panic button, the security company the bank uses has to verify that the alarm is real, then relay it to local PD, giving you a small window to escape. As long as you know the button was pressed, you should be fine. But don't stop there because I wouldn't be surprised if there are other newer measures banks are using right now. So you have your strategy, you maybe have a crew ready, you case your bank, you know the defense measures they might have, and you have a getaway car that flies right under the radar. Now it's time for the get rich quick moment we've been waiting for. If you're doing a covert op, it's going to take a lot more skill, a lot more planning to pull this off. Going back to that really big heist where they made off with $18.9 million, maybe your job will require a man on the inside like it did for them. Being that there's practically an infinite amount of ways to approach this that changes from bank to bank, if you're going to go this route, you probably know what you're doing. But before you leave, maybe do something like the United California bank robbery where they made off with $9 million. Or 55 million dollars in today's money. They cut a hole in the roof and then cut a hole on the top of the vault and even though they were successful before they left, they jammed the vault door. This way when it was time to open for business, the manager couldn't open the vault and thought it was probably something with the locking mechanism itself. So they called in a technician and after hours of trying to open it, he finally discovered the hole at the top buying our thieves just a few more hours to cover their tracks even more. Pretty clever move. If you're going to go in during business hours, whether as a lone wolf or as a crew guns blazing, the number one thing you need to do is to instill fear into your subjects. Terrorize them, shock and awe, discourage anyone from being a hero. Get them to realize that they have their entire lives ahead of them, that why would they put up a fight against these vicious robbers just for a few thousand dollars of the bank's money? The depositors will get their money back from the government, so here you go. Think of your families, don't risk your life, don't try and be a hero. Find clever ways to conceal your identity. Wear extra layers of clothes that you can remove after the heist. Creativity is the name of the game here. All the DNA in shots. Once you're in and out, boom, you just made some instant easy money. But we're not done yet, so escape in that getaway car and let's move on to the last step.
Alright, so we have all this heist money that you just scored. Good job. But before you use that money, you have to make sure it looks legitimate. That you made it through legal means, whether that be a job, business, investments, etc. This is where money laundering comes in, which is another art in its own right. Luckily, we already have a video breaking down how to money launder, which will be linked below this video. Once you've laundered your score, you're good to go. Just make sure that if it's a really big score or any score for that matter, it probably wouldn't be very wise to make any big purchases right away. Another thing to keep in mind is that everything we talked about in this video were based on accounts of people that actually got caught. If you want to make a million dollars legally in business, you should probably study people who failed to make a million dollars. If you want to rob banks, you should probably study how other people got caught and find a way around it. This is called negative advice. As time passes on, it's going to get harder and harder to commit any physical crimes as more and more surveillance comes up. So if this is the career path you want to take, you better take action right now. Theoretically, of course. While you're learning how to rob banks and other ways of making money, another area to improve in is learning how to save more money. After all, even if you get really good at robbing banks, if you just blow all that money afterwards, you'll be right back to where you were when you first started. Not fun. An easy area to save more money in that most people overlook is your phone bill. Especially being that most people are stuck at home or in an office right now and are using Wi-Fi most of the time. This is where Ting comes in. If you're around Wi-Fi a lot, why are you paying so much for a set monthly data plan? With Ting, you just pay for the talk, text, and data you actually use each month. If you use less, you pay less. No contracts, no commitments, no prepaid plans either. At the end of each month, you're charged for the talk, text, and data level which you reached. If you didn't text one month and only use things like Messenger or WhatsApp, you don't get charged for texting that month. And since Ting piggybacks off three major nationwide 4G LTE networks, almost all phones already work with Ting with the same or even better coverage. So switching over is as simple as signing up, switching your SIM card, and you're good to go. The average bill on Ting is just $23 a month, and if you sign up today, you'll get a $25 service credit to try Ting out for free for a month with no strings attached. That means you can keep your existing phone plan open, switch out your SIM card to try out Ting for a month, and if you like it and you find that you'd be paying way less using your phone the exact same way you've been using it, you can cancel your existing plan then. See how much you can save and get $25 off at jake.ting.com with the link below and support the brands that help make this channel possible. Again, that's jake.ting.com with the link below. Welcome to the Watch the End Club. This is yet another video that you guys directly requested in the comments below. So if you have any other recommendations for future videos that you guys want me to make, you can leave it in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing because there is plenty of more free video essays just like this one coming out every single week for free for your viewing pleasure. If you want some behind the scenes stuff, day in the life stuff, memes, etc., you can follow me on Instagram at jaketrend.io. That's gonna wrap it up for this video. Thank you so much for watching. You've been awesome. I've been Jake. I'll see you guys in the next one.